Hi folks, Joey Ricard with TrackSideScenery.com. Welcome back. This is going to be a quick demonstration video about how I make gravel. Whether it's a gravel road or a gravel lot, there's gravel everywhere. Whether it's loose gravel or that fine packed stuff, you're sure to find it almost everywhere in the real world. So the question remains, how do we apply that to our model railroad? Well, for starters, in the real world, there's a lot of different types of gravel. For that matter, there's a lot of different colors and a lot of different textures. So where do we start? In some cases, you could waltz right down to the local hobby shop and buy something off the shelf. In other cases, you might have to make it yourself. That's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to make gravel. Just keep in mind that the exciting part of this is, we're going to do it with homemade and budget supplies. Yep, inexpensive stuff you can find almost anywhere. Also, with these same basic materials, you can create a wide variety of different types of gravels in different colors. There's virtually no limit to what you can come up with. You just have to use your imagination and experiment a little bit. The method we're going to use is very simple. It's very inexpensive and it's also fun. Well, before we get started, I want to take you back to our YouTube channel. If you're familiar with our channel, then you'll remember last year we did a video about using real dirt on your model railroad. In that video, we talked about how we prepared the real dirt for use on the layout. So if you haven't seen it, you'll want to take a look at it because we use some of the same processes in this video of making gravel. As a matter of fact, the preparation of the real dirt is exactly the same as the gravel in this video. The only difference is you're using concrete mix instead of dirt. Yep, your basic standard concrete mix from your local hardware store. And it's very, very inexpensive. You can pause this supply list if you need to. Now, I'm not going to insult your intelligence by showing how I sift concrete mix, but you just take some, put it in a sifter or a screen mesh, and separate the dust from the rocks that's in the mix. Of course, what you come up with is going to be dependent on the scale or the purpose that you're using the gravel for. If you're in a smaller scale, you'll want to grind it up in a blender, just like we did the dirt. And that's why I referred you back to the dirt video. For the larger loose stuff that you see in the images in this video, I just used it right out of the sifter. But for the hard packed stuff in some of the models that you see, I did put it in a blender. Also, just like the dirt video, we're using dirt colored paint as our base coat. We're also using that same paint with a mixture of white glue to hold the gravel to the surface. This base coat of paint we're applying is nothing more than a mask. As you see, I'm painting on a black surface. You may be covering up plywood or something to that effect. Once your base coat of paint is dry, you can start making your glue mixture. And this video is from the dirt video, but it shows you that it's a half and half mixture of paint and white glue. Mix it up real good. Yeah, I told you this was going to be a quick video. It's the middle of summer and we're all busy, so I'm trying to get this done as quick as I can. As you see, I'm applying the glue mixture, that half and half glue mixture, and I'm applying it real heavy to the board over top of that base coat. Don't be shy. Once you have your area thoroughly covered, you can take your concrete dust, which we're going to call gravel for now on. You can take your gravel mixture and start sprinkling it on. Keep in mind that this is the first of two coats and just try to cover it as completely as you can. Okay, now see this picture? How many people out there have wondered how I get this color of gravel? It's the same base material that you see me sprinkling on here. The only difference is I added in ground up blue and gray chalk to get the color I wanted. That's right, if you're familiar with our channel, you know I use chalks in a lot of the projects. It's very easy and I don't have a formula, but simply adding varying degrees of different colored chalks will change the color of the gravel. It also works for the fine stuff as well. Now this is what it looks like once the first coat of gravel has dried. You can see that there's some areas that didn't quite get enough coverage. That's okay because we're going to take care of that in the next coat. And we're also going to show you the secret formula that I use to hold everything down. Hairspray, hairspray, you'll see. Now, if I were smart, and I'm not, I would go buy 10,000 cans of hairspray and put my own label on it and call it model glue. I use this on a lot of different projects, as you know from many of our videos. Don't forget to properly ventilate your room. Hey, you're not done yet. This is going to be the final coat of gravel that you're putting on. It's going to cover the light areas, and it's also going to make everything thicker and more uniform. It's going to make it look like gravel. 
Okay, now for a quick quiz. If I wanted this gravel lot to appear with a bluish tint, what would I do? Yep, I'd add ground up chalk into the mix. What about if I wanted it to be a finer, hard packed surface? Yep, I would have put it in a blender first. You guys are good. Okay, now's the time you wonder if you bought enough hairspray. I think I used two to three cans on this project. Now you're going to think I'm crazy, but you really need to saturate it. And if you need help, there's the definition of saturate. Before we go any further, did I mention that you need to saturate this? Okay, as long as we're on the same page. I know it looks crazy, but when you put a lot of hairspray on there, it gives the gravel a chance to settle and pack itself, so it looks realistic for modeling. The other point is, when it dries thoroughly, it creates a hard surface. So when you put your models on there, or even your fingers, they won't leave an indentation. You can also sand this down to achieve any desired texture you want. And here you can see that very same module in its completed form. Incidentally, the module in the foreground with the tracks and the weeds and the dirt, those techniques were also featured in videos right here on our YouTube channel. So if you haven't seen them, be sure to check them out. I hope this short video gave you a good idea how easy it is to achieve realistic results with inexpensive materials. I'm not kidding when I tell you that all the roads, all the lots, and even the ballast on this layout were all created with the same materials. This is Joey Ricard with TrackSideScenery.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time.